Hey guys, you're listening to Drinks with Lisa, brought to you by Fair Foodie. It's a real and raw discussion with Australian farmers, producers, and small business owners. I've been lucky to have met with hundreds of these hardworking Aussies recently, and it's time to share their incredible journeys, challenges, and achievements. My goal is to uncover ways in which we can become more mindful consumers and make an impact on the Australian economy, environment, and its people. I invite you to grab a drink, sit back and enjoy as I introduce you to some very inspiring guests. Cheers. Did you know that New South Wales Central Coast is home to an award-winning winery? I'm very excited to be here today at Fires Creek Botanical Wines with the owner, Nadia O'Connell. Hi welcome. Lisa. <laughs> How are you going Lisa? Really Thanks for coming. good. Thanks for having me here. You're very welcome. I'm very excited to be here having drinks with Lisa and no better drink, in my opinion, than wine. <laughs> 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 what are we going to do here today, Nadia? Okay, so um, I've got our current vintages of wine um, and I'll take you through the uh, tasting of those. Um, the first one is actually made from kiwis and fijoa. Uh, fijoa is a South American fruit and um, it's, um, we grow them on the property. So Amazing. the kiwi tunnel is just actually down the back here. Um, it soon will start sprouting up um, now that it's springtime and the fijoa um, we've got trees in the middle of the property and anything that's grown here on the property is grown organically um, and this wine actually won a um, bronze medal and it's um, it's a dry wine as it's classified and I'll pour you a little glass amazing and um, I've never seen a fijoa in real life to be honest so I might have to check out your fijoa tree your tree yeah. on the way out actually um, they grow them a lot in New Zealand and um, I've seen them for sale in, in the shops here, but they're like $2 for one. And uh. Uh, New Zealanders, when they needed a bit of taste of home, they um, probably splurge. But uh, if I get New Zealanders here, they always see the fijo on the list. Yeah. And they tell me that they're going to hunt their tree, hump down our tree in the uh. night time. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got it locked up in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> well, lovely. Um, so you, thank you. you know, I've got those just in little mini uh, tasting glasses, but um, so it's a little bit similar to a white wine. This particular wine, even though it doesn't have any white grape, um, and the fijo, it classifies as dry, as I said, yeah. um, and it's not highly acidic though. It's um, so it's quite easy drinking, and you'd have it with something, say your seafoods and salads. Um, yeah, white meats. Mm. Nice. Mm. Mm. That's lovely. Mm. It's quite easy drinking. I find um, most people, if they, um, they actually when they come here, they expect that they're going to be all sweet wines, and this one um, is a great way to start and to show showcase that not all fruit wines are actually sweet, um, especially if they're from America, where uh, fruit wines are predominantly um, probably are sweeter sweeter wines. And yeah. um, so, and then even I suppose the bottle shapes and the perception of it that it's made from fruit, people think they're going to be sweet, but this is, yeah, as you can see. I would compare that to a grape wine as well. Yeah, it's quite, to me, it's a little bit like, actually, there's a couple of New Zealand wines that I think has got quite similarities to it, um, in, in just in, in the, the complexity of the, in the style of the wine. It reminds mm. me a little bit of some Marlborough Valley, actually, wines. Yeah, yeah. it's actually, it's really, really lovely. Mm. But, um, so do any of your wines have grapes in them? No, so that's a little bit of a yeah. funny story. So behind us, um, actually, this is a, they're all juvenile at the moment, but it's um, not juvenile, sorry, they're just starting to sprout out because it's um, springtime. Um, we have 90 grape vines here. Um, they're a Duraf grape, a red grape. Um, but actually, we just make uh, wine for our kids out of those wines. Oh, our right. vines. Um, we don't feed it to them yet because they're only <laughs> age 6 to 14, so not Can allowed. Can I say, wine for your kids. So you're bottling them for when they're older, is yes. that right? Yeah. Got it. So um, every year we do a foot stomp, which uh, mm -hmm. they video it and they have a hoot and we all get in the in the bucket and stomp oh, around. And um, we call it the con conga because it feels like, you know, <laughs> well, that many people are squished in the bucket and you kind of end up doing the conga. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I, every year I tweak it a little bit differently. I might add violets to it or rose petals or coffee because I don't make normal wines. Yeah. And um, so I tweak it a little bit and then I'm going to keep that wine for them when they turn an age where they'll drink it responsibly. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a beautiful mm. gift to give to your children. I love that. And it's, it's a really unique 
lifestyle for them here, right? But you were not always a winemaker. You were a marketing lecturer. Yeah, that's true. And your husband, um, Francis, yep. an engineer. Yeah, he's um, he works on rigs and um, did a lot of fly-in, fly-out kind of work. And we were um, based overseas for about six years um, mm. where the kids, where two of the children were um, from a very young age, moved over there. And they started to go to school there. So um, actually, when we lived in in Singapore, the kids had a um, a grass patch um, about the biggest two sizes of this table, wow. and that was to share with five hundred other units of people. So um, now they've got a backyard, which oh. even every day I s honestly still pinch myself that we actually do live here in this. Yeah. it is a beautiful it's place. It's magnificent. Yeah, um, and as the seasons unfold, that's what's quite special. Above us at the moment is masses of wisteria, which. Even every year still surprises me. We've been here five years now and that's just stunning. And, um, and then you've got autumn that kind of just really glows with reds and, and, and oranges. And um, yeah, I don't think I'll ever get sick of it. It's of course. A, yeah. And so, so you've got a lot of botanicals growing in this garden that go into the wine. Yeah. Tell me what else is in this garden. Okay, so um, there's a wide range of things. I think I grow about 40 different things. I know I've got 42 different species of roses, which actually the wow. next wine, um, I could, uh, if you're ready for that yet. <laughs> Sadly, yes. <laughs> um, so the next wine is made from rose petal and pear. And um, I collect around between 10 and 15 kilos of rose petals to put in this wine. And um, that's a lot of rose petals um, because they're it pretty is. light. Yeah. Um, so um, this wine, um, yeah, the rose petals and pear, um, Oh, and I should have muted that. Apologies. There's your little glass, and I'll Thank just you. turn this one off. Oh, there's <laughs> even a little petal in there. How lovely! It could fall from above. Oh, <laughs> wisteria. Okay, <laughs> the little garnish. Yeah, garnish of wisteria. <laughs> um, so rose petals we grow at the very front, and then I've got fijoas and guavas. I grow elderberry, and then I use the elderflower to make a lemon and elderflower. I've got tangerines, limes, lemons, wow. mulberries. Passion fruit, uh, violets, what else? I'm trying to remember all my trees, pomegranates, um, there's a plum picot, um, a plum. Um, I've even got an apple and a pear in there as well to give a go and see what happens. Wow. Um, I'm just trying to see what else. There are mandarins and um, yeah, I kind of you kind of lose count of all the trees, but that's a lot. That's, yeah, that's it's a quite lot lot. going on here. <laughs> so it's quite, that was a really uh, big learning curve, I suppose, for us to when you do great. You kind of that it's that repeat, repeat, repeat. You get obviously good at what you do. Um, with what we do, you have to make a new wine every month, and then mm. you've got to know how to grow that particular fruit, and um, and then the season of that fruit, and what you do, how you care for it during that season. Um, and we grow organically, so then that's another layer of, I suppose, in a way, complexity in a way, because um, you've got different bugs you've got to keep an eye out for, and how mm. you're going to treat them organically, and. Um, and when you harvest, but it's small scale, um, so it's not um, mass production. So some of the trees, I've got three trees of guavas and three of fijoas. So it's on a picking day, it's totally manageable, and it's even a job where the kids enjoy doing because it's not like a um, orchard of a hundred trees we've yeah. got to go and pick, which would be quite overwhelming. I think even to not even just a kid, it'd be overwhelming yeah. to me, you know, to try. So it's still a novelty. Yeah, it's still novelty, small, small scale novelty. So that's um, quite nice. And even in the making, every month I make something new, and I'll mix it up as well. I might, I won't make the same wine necessarily every time. I might add something different to it, um, that's which great. is how some of the wines, which I'll talk you through in a moment, came about too. So you'll never get bored. You're always getting creative. <laughs> yeah, and that's probably my personality. I like, yeah. you know, to do that kind of Marketers thing. Marketers are like that. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> but not just, not just um, <laughs> organic, which is amazing, because there's not a lot of organic wines out there, and I've scaled the shops a few times. Mm -hmm. um, but also they're vegan aren't they oh yeah that's so a lot they of are. wines have egg and fish products in them yep that's correct so um we don't clarify with uh, milk or eggs or fish um, and um, we just let that natural sedimentation happen so some of our wines are still to a little degree um, cloudy still um, and any sedimentation left in that is they've already been made for two and a half years at that stage or two and a quarter years so um it's it's you know residual pear or, or rose petals. Which it's, is yeah, fine. It's fine. Um, and um, yeah, I, I think for me, 
mm. growing organically and then I don't want to add anything to my wines to speed up the process. I prefer to just wait for it to more naturally happen and eventually yeah. the, the, the clarity happens and um, um, yeah, I feel more comfortable with that as, as in making wines to do it that way. Totally, and mm. I think more people are looking for that anyway, aren't they? Mm. They're prepared to wait yeah. for a quality product. Yes, yeah, and mm. even um, some of the winemakers I've been speaking to, some young winemakers, uh, you'll start to see progressively mm. more um, cloudy, less perfectly clear wines, and that just means they haven't been strip filtered or additives added to um, make the clarity happen, mm. which is a nice way. So this is, um, it's, you can definitely taste rose. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, it's very nice with a cheese board. I, um, Actually, uh, on bottling day, I was quite hungry because we um, worked pretty hard on bottling day. And um, um, I don't know if it was a case of super hungry, but I got a, had some leftover cheeses and I got that out and had a try with this one. And, and it went beautifully with a, 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 very, a variety of cheeses. Yeah, um, it would. Yeah, camemberts and um, yeah, I had some quince paste. And yeah, it was... Oh, yeah. Yum. Mm. It reminds me a bit more towards the sherry end. Is mm. that right? It's a little bit, a little not sweeter. Um, mm. It probably is about a, a mid, mid level. It's not as probably as sweet as maybe a, a Moselle. Or I think this one as well also throws a little bit sweeter because you're thinking rose petals. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yes. um, and then it finishes dry. It does finish dry. Yeah. yeah you're right. Mm. Oh, mm. That's lovely. And um, you talked about cheese, which is awesome with wine. Mm. And I saw you just before we started recording. Yep. Um, with some guests in your garden yep. tasting chocolate with uh -huh. wine. Yep. So this is, you offer a number of experiences here. That's one of them. Yeah, that is. Um, so I like to kind of work with, and maybe that comes from my study and lecturing side, but I like working with the kind of like-minded people. Yes. And um, so I met a fantastic chocolatier who makes beautiful chocolates on the coast. And I did a lot of chocolate tasting <laughs> and to <laughs> be able to pair them together, what goes well with research, each wine. Research, yeah, research. Yeah. Um, and then I, I thought of, actually it was during um, COVID actually, I thought of what other things and what other target markets or people or things could we create here that would suit different people. And I get quite a number of inquiries from girls weekends, um, hens groups, just people who want to get together and have some fun. And so I created what's called foraging and mixology. Um, so we go out into the garden and forage for what then becomes their garnishes and it's all organically grown so they can eat it. Doesn't, you know, it's all fine to consume. Yeah. And um, then they create their own little mini garnishes um, and four mini cocktails and they blend um, the wines as well to make a, like a tasting board of different, different things. And it's just kind of fun. People get their hands in it, they get out in the garden, which um, for a lot of people, they don't get that kind of opportunity to yeah. do and just to hang out with a group of girlfriends and and drink cocktails that's always going to equal fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and so tranquil here it's really really lovely hmm. getaway so, which is not far from the city yeah you know, they can be only, here in an hour or so yeah. from Sydney yep it's only about an hour away um, one of the other um, tours I do is a, a meet the winemaker so some people want a little bit more an educational style where they learn about the, how the wine's made and how or um, how uh, how we grow organically and I show them the worm farms and how we do sheet mulching and a variety of other different things. And then they get to go in the vat room, which people quite enjoy mm. to see where it's all made and um, talk about process. So that's another little um, experience people can book in for. Yeah, that's great. And then the last one is um, bush tucker and uh, wine tasting. So uh, a lovely um, local Aboriginal elder um, does a smoking ceremony and didgeridoo playing and then talks about bush tucker. And I've started experimenting with making um, Australian native wines because then I'll be able to make wines that don't, they don't make anywhere else in the whole world. Wow. Be and I've started growing um, Australian natives here to be able to utilise to do that. Um, and I've, um, for example, making things out of lemon myrtle and... Um, oh, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's actually my daughter. That will be really exciting. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, um, do you do the, um, with the didgeridoo and the spoken ceremony here? Yes, oh, yes. Amazing. Yeah. The, um, yeah, so that's going to be done in the grounds. Um, at the front, we've got a beautiful, some beautiful lemon scented gums and um, a nice backdrop for um, Aboriginal storytelling and, oh. and people get to enjoy some wine tasting um, with that as well. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll have to come back for this one. <laughs> now, the next wine, you ready? Wow, yeah, yep, I'm yeah. ready. All right. Let's do it. Okay, so this one is made from blueberry and lavender, 
Actually, this one um, is a wine I can't find that anyone else makes in the whole world. Um, it's um, when I tried to just make it, I um, looked online to see if I could find another wine maker to ask them how much lavender should I put in this wine. Wow! And um, actually, I couldn't find anyone who even made it. So um, amazing. The um, so it's made from Thank blueberries um, and the lavender is um, called Augustiflora, which is a, a culinary lavender. It's organic and um, it's a beautiful colour. It is a lovely colour, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Uh, this one is actually, <laughs> jokingly, um, I call yoga in a bottle ah. because um, the lavender, well, if you drink enough wine, you'll always feel relaxed, but um, it yeah. also gives this kind of your muscles get quite relaxed after you drink this wine so yeah. there must be something in that lavender I think that well, is lavender actually true. Lavender is meant to put you to sleep isn't it? Yeah. Or relax you at mm. least. Yeah. Oh, Don't nice. fall asleep on me Lisa, we've got, still got oh, wine to yeah. try. <laughs> <laughs> oh it smells beautiful. Mm. Wow it's yeah really beautiful aroma. And the lavender kind of lifts in your palate and then you can in a way smell it in your in your mouth in a way. Mm. Yeah. Wow, hmm. I love that. It's still, again, ends a little dry. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's really beautiful. Hmm. So this wine came about, sometimes I will ask groups, um, if you think of a new wine and I make it, I'll give you a case of wine for free. Just yeah. as a little bit, people like a bit of a competition, yeah. like to get involved. And this wine um, came about, we had a group that comes, um, they're actually university students and um, the lecture, they come every term. So the lecturer actually suggested, um, what about blueberry and lavender? And I was just about to start a blueberry wine and I said, yeah. you're on and uh, I, I've got to try it. Wow. And um, that's how it came about. And I, um, But it was just based on a bit of trial and error and how much lavender to put. Mm. And then what's that lavender going to do in one year's time? How's it going to intensify? Uh, was quite fun making. And then it um, picked up a bronze medal. So I was like, oh, yes. Nice, <laughs> yeah. nailed it. Yeah. Um, so, are your batches small enough so that if you perhaps don't get the right intensity, mm -hmm. is it too late? Is it over? Okay. Do you have to wait two years or can you tweak it along the way and yep. add okay. a few spices at the end? Yeah, so you could um, actually do that with my chili wine because uh, we hand juice the oranges um, and all the citrus we use. Every year I do a different citrus for that one. And um, a chili is quite volatile to work with, yes. of course, because it's heat and you want to get it to a level where people, you're not going to strip their throat basically by this chilli yeah. wine. Um, there's a certain percentage of the population who would like it like that, yeah. but I try and make it so that anyone can kind of drink this wine. And um, so with that one, I do actually add the chilies at the very end. Uh -huh. For the lavenders, I add, um, and the other flowers and things I do add at the very beginning, but you could tweak along the way. Um, with that one, actually, when I made it, I, I thought it's a lot of blueberries to waste if this lavender wine doesn't work. So I only did half of that. Mm -hmm. And then after three days, I loved it. And I thought, right, I'm uh, converting both sides. Yeah, but right. the, um, the lemon myrtle one I'm experimenting with the moment, at the moment, again, I don't know what it's going to throw in, in a year's time. So mm -hmm. what I did was two different vats and I did uh, different parts per million, I suppose you call it, or the amount of kilos mm -hmm. or grams of the lemon myrtle in the two different batches, just to see how they develop and how, um, what the flavour becomes. Yeah, so right. a bit of experimenting. And how many bottles would you make in a batch? Depends on the fruit yield. So some fruits are really juicy, like mm. orange, you get a high yield out of um, processing, but something like, um, but then again, it's skin's quite heavy. So a kilo of fruit, then you, you, you lose that in that. Right. Um, but some think like say a peach or a pear. Yeah, they're still, they're quite juicy, but they've got a fair amount of pulp within them, which then we then compost. So it's building oh, our garden and, and our feeding our earthworms, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they must be happy worms. They are, yeah. <laughs> Legless. <laughs> oh, I like it. Legless worms. <laughs> so, you also have weddings here. Yeah. Probably yeah. not right at the moment. No, not right at the moment. Um, so, it is a lovely backdrop for it. And actually, it's such a special day. I really quite enjoy yeah. uh, hosting weddings. I used to work in conference and events and weddings. and. I don't know, weddings are always a happy occasion. So I feel we're quite privileged that people choose to tie the knot in the backyard here. Yeah, um, yeah it's a, um, and again, that seasonality is lovely here that people get um, different photos and, uh, and there's such wonderful photo photographers on the coast too that capture it and it's quite a thrill for even me to, to host weddings here, I must admit. Yeah, yeah it's really mm. special. Mm. And being part of the coast community is quite special in itself mm. because 
from and I'm fairly new to the coast but from what I've learned is that you all work together yeah which is really really nice so yep. for example your chocolates come from Luca chocolatiers yep. Yep. Um, even your these boards are made locally aren't they that's a sip and graze board so um, they're in Australia well they're an invention by um, a couple on the coast who have um, made boards where you can put your glass of wine and take it camping or just put it on your table so you've got somewhere to put your wine glass and mm -hmm. then add your um, you know your, your spread of cheese and and, and whatever um, yeah and they've they're really popular and um, I just love what they were doing. I actually saw them on Facebook and then I found out it was actually one of the mums who my daughter went to school with. And ah. so um, then of course we've now become friends and she's custom made um, boards that you saw um, with the chocolate and wine tasting. Yeah. Um, so that's a nice collaboration. We've done a few other things locally. Um, there's a trail we've uh, created called Central, Central Coast Scenic Sips. So within six minutes drive, there's a, a microbrewery and a distillery. Um, and then at the distillery, there's uh, Mr. Godi Gelato. So people um, like to do that little trail. Um, and then if you've got a group of people, some people like gin, some people like beer, some people like wine, and it's kind of a bit of something for everyone. Yeah. So great. that's not been a lovely collaboration. Um, and we all make something different. We don't feel like we're competitors. We're just. Um, that's what I like about it. Yeah. It's it's just a fun, friendly relationship. Supporting each mm. other. I don't know if that's based due to alcohol, but <laughs> that's the way it is. <laughs> I think it's yeah. good business is working together, it's really important. Mm. And then there's another um, group I've been working with called, um, we've created a trail called Meet the Makers, um, which um, each of those businesses provide a behind the scenes experience for customers to, to book into. And it might be a cheese making workshop or you can go out on um, the Hawkesbury and do some, uh, look at how the pearls are made and they can do a pearl extraction and, and see that process and meet the actual pearl farmer. Um, and then at the chocolate and um, nougat factory at West Gosford, um, you can do a tour behind the scenes, which you feel a bit like your Willy Wonka experience. <laughs> um, see where the chocolate and nougat's made, and you get to sample little things as you go along. So um, we all thought we could make a little collaboration there and get the word out about the Central Coast to um, yeah. to people that there is artisans and different experiences that you can have here on the Central Coast. Hmm. Now, I have to ask, you used to be a university lecturer. <laughs> yes, yeah. Steep learning curve, you yep. mentioned that earlier. Yep. Did you always have it in you to think, I want to live on a small farm and a winery and make my own wine and run events? Or did this just, did you just see a for sale, a for sale sign one day and say, let's buy it? Okay, so actually when I met my <laughs> husband, um, not long after, We'd been going out for a while, and I remember one night we actually like um, he had, he had studied some permaculture, and we had drawn this little picture of our ideal like place we'd like to live, and had lots of fruit trees, and it was kind of a a little bit of a mirror image of, of this, and and um, and I was and I, at the time when we, we bought this place, I had I hadn't forgotten about that, but I, I afterwards a couple of years later, I thought I remember exactly that that time when we thought. Um, we'd love to own just a, a little little place that we could grow in our organic veggies mm. and just have a little bit of an alternate lifestyle in a way. And um, we just were fortunate enough that this um, place came up on the market when we were, we were looking and um, to buy. And it was in my hometown, so um, I already loved the area. And um, and they had a winery attached as well as being already organic um, little property. So. Um, we just dived in and thought we just fell in love with it basically and that, yeah. th that let's do it yeah so we we think we're we, we didn't have a sea change we had a wine change <laughs> although it's not part of the sea <laughs> yeah that's right you've got the best mm. of both worlds here mm. oh i think it's really special and you are located directly opposite a primary school. Yes. I have to ask, yeah. do you see a lot of frazzled parents come over here <laughs> to grab a bottle of wine on their way home? Actually, I, I, thought, I thought about doing some Thirsty Thursdays and, um, yes. and then actually um, my daughter's actually just started kindergarten this year <laughs> and with COVID actually, um, I was started to text, we've got a you know a WhatsApp chat we have with all the kindy mums and uh, I was going to do a come on on Friday afternoons, let's have a, have a little get together. The kids can walk across the road and we can have a little drink and a relax. And, um, and then I started writing texts and I, I forgot, oh, that's right, we can only have a certain amount of numbers at one time. So oh, right. um, as soon as that list, yes, we'll do, definitely do that. And um, I, it's, a, it's quite a little special school. There's only 150 kids. And uh, I've, yeah, that's one of the bonuses of, of living here just across the road and um, yeah, nice and handy. But actually even just made me think of something. Um, 
when we moved to the, here, uh, we were, uh, the previous owners taught us the winemaking. He was a food scientist and she was a science teacher. And they were really good with us in, in the handover. We spent about a month together learning the winemaking. And um, then one day they randomly said, oh, that's right, there's, there's fireflies here. So um, in October, November, the backyard um, down around the creek area of Fires Creek um, gets fireflies. And I'm like, you're joking me. Like, For me, this place was already heaven. And I thought, um, how more magical can this place get kind of thing. So now tell, are they the ones that glow in the dark? Yes. They ah, like, okay. Beep, beep, oh, amazing. Yeah. 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 So I'm, the, them out. I'm the biggest kid. You're very welcome. Come back, oh. bring your little bubba and uh, have a look. Yeah. It's, it's really beautiful. Um, right on dust, they all kind of pop out and it only lasts for an, about an hour and a half. Right. Yeah. Because I was wondering about the name. So this little creek is called Fires Creek. Yes. Yes. So it, it goes around the whole property and um, it's always flowing, a lovely um, little creek. And mm. um, yeah, it's called Fires Creek. I like to think that it was actually, uh, it is named due to fireflies, but anyone who lives in this valley gets fireflies if they live along the river. Yeah, right. That's nice. oh, lovely. Mm. And I think being organic, I really like the fact that, that we can try and preserve, you know, something like that longer. Yeah. yeah, of course. Actually, kind of like the bees, you yeah. want to protect the bees, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you get a lot of bees here? Actually, I've got a beehive, so yeah. I started beekeeping. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, um, not long after we bought the property, I, I bought a flow hive, which is an Australian invention. Okay. And um, started beekeeping, so that's quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, I even teach my, I probably taught my youngest daughter since she was in about three. I've suited her up and let her handle the bee frames. That's and, great. Hmm. Wow, they're really getting quite an education just living here, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, I hope I so. Love that. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the next wine actually um, has got honey in it, so we might as well try that one. Let's give it a go. Um, it's actually made from uh, nectarines and honey, mm -hmm. and um, this um, the honey. I actually we eat all our honey, so I actually get the honey from the man who actually taught me beekeeping, um, and they're called Beautiful Honey. They're in Matcham, so just live over the hill that way uh -huh. um, he taught me beekeeping and um, so then um, I get my um, when I need honey for making a wine I get it from him and um, he actually wins the Rollies to show with his honey called Matcham Gold um, you can have a check out or people wow. can have a check out of that particular um, brand of honey but it, he does do some beautiful things um, so it's made from nectarines do you want to hear the story about the nectarines? I do. You got time? I have got time. <laughs> okay, so the nectarines come from a, um, a local farmer as well. And um, he's up at Mango Mountain, mm -hmm. um, which is just here on the Central Coast. Yeah. And uh, one of the guys who picks for him actually um, had come in a few times and he said to me, um, oh, have you ever made a nectarine uh, wine? And I, I'd only made a peach one at that stage. And he said, oh, I'll pick for a guy who throws away tons of, um, of fruit and because it's already soft or it's a weird shape. And so he's ugly fruit, I suppose, or <laughs> with um, fruit that's already soft, by the time he gets to the market, it's already overripe. Sure. And um, I said, wow, can I have this fruit? That's just, well, it's ripened on a tree. Amazing. It's perfect sweetness. It's vine or tree ripened is optimal fruit. Yeah. Um, give me his contact details anyway. So I, I contacted him, Peter's name. He's a lovely guy. And um, he wouldn't take any money. He said, oh, donate some money for charity. And um, anyway, it was um, November. So I gave a couple hundred bucks to uh, Movember, uh -huh. from Movember. And uh, I went up there with my nephew and we basically filled the back of my ute in, uh, in nectarines. Wow. And, um, so this is um, ugly fruit turned into beautiful <laughs> wine. <laughs> it looks beautiful to me. Hmm. Mm. Wow. Oh, that's really lovely. Mm. So the nectarines really kind of come out again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the honey. Yep. yep. And the honey in there too. It's quite um, a really nice creamy yeah. Yeah, finish, it is a, isn't it? It is a bit creamy, I agree. Mm. Yeah. And actually quite goes nicely with a, something like a brie or a camembert, like a creamy style cheese. Yeah. And I've had it with roast pork. It's nice. nice. That kind of the you know, stone fruit and pork goes nicely together. Lovely. A little bit on the sweeter end. And I find you get a real range of people coming in who like their dry, their sweet. and. Everyone has their preferences, and then they get surprised and they like something they weren't thinking they like. And That's right. Yeah, it's, I, I like people coming in just to explore and be experimental and don't expect um, a Sauvignon Blanc and a, and a Shiraz because that's yes. not what we do. And I just say, look, try and just see what you think. And um, that's right. most, most of them say, oh, wow, they kind of weren't expecting. You have to um, experiment here because none of these wines are probably what anyone has tasted before. That's true, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're right. At first, you might look at it and think, "Well, oh, that sounds way too fruity for me." Yes. Yeah. But they actually are—they're they're all really beautiful quality wines yeah, that you would you. you would drink. <laughs> not uh, not that I wouldn't have expected that, but 
um, you know, they're not they're not overly fruity. Yeah, and not overly sweet too, which no. I think is important. The um, um, I said when we first bought the place and we put our first wine in for competition because it takes at least a wine, uh, sorry, one year to make your wine. And some of them, as I said, take longer. Um, and we actually went, won a bronze medal on our first wine. And we, it was a little bit of a few moment, I suppose, because we, we, we bought this place and, and thought, yes, we can make wine, let's try it. And then, um, yeah. but I think under the guidance of the previous owners who were very passionate about what they did, um, we, were, um, we picked up a bronze medal in the first first wine we made and since then we've um, won silvers and bronze I'm really still going for gold yeah but um, good on you yeah the um, I mean of course even the f um, when you when you get a silver or bronze you think oh but then there's always that's a good part of life you kind of push yourself to the next level and try yeah. and experiment further and and try and improve on everything you do so but after one year of winemaking yeah that's probably right. didn't expect that award. <laughs> no no <laughs> it's, it's a really right. good confirmation yeah. that you're actually doing a really great job <laughs> yeah and uh, just a confirmation okay yes we can do this and um, yeah because yeah, so. not only are you mastering winemaking you're mastering flower growing and fruit <laughs> making and honey making and everything it's crazy wow you're really <sighs> learned a lot of skills in the last few years i'm sure yeah that's true but it's it's kept life exciting yeah mm. are there yeah. any fruits that you've tried to put into wine that you didn't quite work um, okay that's a good one um, I actually got a, a, a watermelon from a watermelon farmer once oh. and um, he's like oh here try and make some wine and if it turns out come and give me some and um, I found that it was a little bit insipid and oh. um, a watermelon um, and I have spoken to people since who've grown up on watermelon farms and they said they just use that little thin band in the middle of a watermelon which is really the sweet spot the bit. and I suppose they've got that many watermelons that being able to harvest out that or cut out that little piece is doable. Yeah. Um, but I did find um, that that wine was, yeah, particularly like we didn't we didn't love it. But fortunately, we only made a demijohn, which is just a little five liter of it. Mm -hmm. And I actually had never, I've never made small scale. I've, that's the only wine I ever made in a five mm. liter. So fortunately, it wasn't too much to give to the earthworms. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the legless worms. <laughs> well, that's um, exciting. And what's next for you? What's next for you guys? Um, well, I suppose um, just starting to promote those new experiences I was talking about. Yeah. And um, then over summer, I'm uh, looking at growing dahlias and sunflowers, actually. Oh, lovely. So sometimes we have um, people come to do photo shoots for their family and Christmas photos and things here. So um, some lovely local photographers come in to do different shoots for their family, for families. And so I thought if I'd grow like rows of dahlias and flowers that people mm. can get photos amongst that that might be another little um thing that we, we can offer here yeah, yeah. great idea mm. wow well thank you for having us this is really really beautiful i i would love to sit here all afternoon and drink wine with you <laughs> <laughs> maybe we will <laughs> We might pop this one actually at the end, hey? So this is the raspberry oh, one. Let's do and, it. And um, <laughs> then I quite like this one with a, bu a, a glass of bubbles actually, Lisa. And um, so maybe we can um, pour that up afterwards and have um, some champagne and, and raspberry wine, which... Um, let's do that. Yeah. This one won a silver medal, so quite proud of this wow. one. And this is the, um, the raspberries I get from Tasmania because Tasmania does awesome raspberries. Mm. Amazing. Mm. Well, congratulations. Thank You're running you. a really <laughs> slick operation here. I do love your wines. I'm very grateful that I'm a local neighbour. <laughs> <laughs> Not far to come. That's right. Yeah. Um, Children are welcome. <laughs> yeah, they are. So I'll be back. But please check out Fires Creek Botanical Wines at fairfoodie.com.au and on their social media channels on Instagram and Facebook and all the links will be below. Thank you, Nadia, for having me here today. Thank you, Lisa. Really appreciate it. It's been lovely talking to you. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to like and share it and smash the subscribe button. And if you are an Australian farmer, producer or small business owner who would like to have a drink with Lisa, get in touch. Have a good. Where do you just want us to interact, yeah. So we're just going to have a really casual conversation yep. and then you can crack the wine and All talk right. me through it as okay. you go. And I can drink as well? As Absolutely. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you might. <laughs> do we need a few more bottles? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we could have captured that. <laughs> okay, oh, 